You can take your seats, I promise, for the last time. All right, now I would like to know what kids out there normally go to their classes but don't normally stay in uh, the big church with your mom and dad. If, if you normally go to a class, can you raise your hand real quick? I just want to see. All right. Thank you for being here. I love it that you're here. Thank you. So normally what happens is we play lots of games in here and have cookies and stuff while you guys are in class. I don't know if your mom and dad never told you that, but that's... No, I'm just kidding. We don't do that. We don't really do that. Did you think we did that? No. Titus is looking at me with a glare on his face. No, we don't. We don't do that. We actually, what we do is we look at the Bible and we read it and we talk about it. That's what we do on a Sunday. Every Sunday, we just do what you do in class, really. We talk about what the Bible says, and that's what we want to do tonight. Um, we've been talking tonight about how Jesus is the light of the world, and, and this is the greatest true story that has ever been told. Uh, you know how sometimes when you, when you hear a story and you're reading it through or you're watching it maybe in a movie or a show, and then you find out it's a true story. It wasn't just made up. Somebody uh, actually lived this story. Well, that's the story of Christmas. It's a true story. It's the greatest story ever told, but it's also a true story. And it starts with darkness. If you remember at the beginning of your Bibles, and if you're out there, if, if, you're, if you're not normally in this big meeting, I want you to shout out this answer. I'm allowing you to shout right now, okay? I want you to shout out this answer. Who knows, who knows, in the beginning, what comes next? In the beginning, oh, very good, was the word, very good, well done. In the beginning was the word. That means God was in the very, very beginning and when God created the world, the first thing that it says in Genesis is there was darkness everywhere. Darkness all over the place. There was no sun, there was no stars, there was no moon, just darkness. And then God said, let there be light. light. Exactly. He said, let there be light. All of a sudden there was light. Light exploded in the darkness. And it was a good light. It was a light where men and women could know God and could walk with him in the Garden of Eden in, in perfect fellowship. They could just live right next to God. God himself could be right there with them. But then another kind of darkness came back into the world. And men and women turned away from the light of God and they chose the darkness of sin. Sin is a Bible word. And what sin is, it's a, a darkness of turning away from God. It comes when we disobey God. That is what happens when we, when we sin. We disobey God. And when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? They were turning away from God. And you know what happened? Their hearts became dark. And the Bible says that darkness spread through all of humanity. Every boy and every girl of every age has a darkness inside of them. A great darkness, and this darkness could not be overcome. Nobody had a light inside of them that could overcome the darkness. It was almost like you went on a, a big cave exploration. Who's ever been in a cave? Any kids been in a cave? Yeah? You went in a big cave exploration. You were deep, deep, deep down, and there was no light in the cave, and all of a sudden you thought, it's kind of spooky in this cave. It's a little scary. Who has a flashlight? And then everybody said, I didn't bring one. Did you bring one? And dad even said, I didn't bring one. Did you bring one? I didn't bring one. And they kept saying, who brought the flashlight? You know what? Nobody brought one. It was just a big, dark, spooky cave. Except this cave wasn't a physical cave, like in the earth. It was a spiritual cave in our hearts. It was just dark, and there was no light. Actually, in the book of Isaiah... God says that that's what the world was like. It was a land of gloom and deep darkness. When God looked down at the world, you know what he saw? He saw a cave full of gloom and deep darkness. Now that is why, that is why when we read these words in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 9, and they're going to be on the screen behind me. I want you to read them with me. That's why these words are so precious. Because this world was just one big cave of darkness. People just disobeying and angry with each other and hurting each other and angry at God and raising their fist at God and saying they didn't like him. And all that was darkness. 
But then God did something amazing. Instead of just hitting back at all those people that were raising their fist at him, God did something very much unlike us. He sent light into the world. I want you to read this with me. If you're able to read, I want you to read this with me. This is from John chapter 1, verse 9. It says this. Read it with me. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Isn't that amazing? It's saying God's going to send light into the world. And then when Jesus comes, he announces that he is the light. Now, he wasn't all glowy and everything. It wasn't like he had light coming out of his head or anything. But he was a light that could light up dark hearts, hearts that were darkened by sin. Jesus could make them light. Now, all of you at every age, you know what it's like to know that your heart is dark with sin, that you feel guilty about sin, something you've done wrong. Well, Jesus was saying he could take dark hearts and he could make them light with the presence of God again. So Jesus spoke to them in John chapter 8, verse 12, and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He brought light into our darkness, but he did this in a very unusual way, in a very unusual way, because you know what happens in our heart when, we're, when our hearts are dark? That darkness has to go somewhere. It's not like regular darkness where if you light a light, the darkness just disappears. That's not what heart darkness is like. That heart darkness, it has to go somewhere. It has to be taken by somebody. So what Jesus did is he took all of that darkness of sin and he took it on himself. As if he had all of that darkness coming from him, even though he didn't. He took it on himself. All of that nasty darkness, he took it on himself. He put it on his own heart. He covered over himself with that darkness. And actually, we read about Jesus when he was dying on the cross. And the Bible writers say that even the sun itself didn't shine in the same way. It was covered over. We don't know if it was by clouds or some other way that it was darkened in that day. I think that's a way of kind of showing that Jesus, the light of the world, was taking on himself the darkness of our sin. Listen to this amazing verse. It's talking about when Jesus died on the cross. Here's what it says. It says this. From the sixth hour, there was darkness. Now, that's the middle of the day. There was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. For three whole hours in the middle of the day, there was a darkness over the land. And about the ninth hour, after those three hours, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Now, he said this in his own language. He says, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. But we can translate it so we know what those words mean. It means this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here's what was happening. While Jesus took the darkness of our sin on top of himself, what was happening was the sky went dark, creation went dark, because God was looking at Jesus and he was seeing all of our darkness on him, all of our sin. And God doesn't want to ever look at sin because it's horrible to God. And so it was as though God was pulling away from Jesus. Jesus, the one that he loved and that was his obedient son that he loved with all of his heart, he was pulling away from him because the one that had always been light was now dark and God doesn't like sinful darkness. And so he was pulling away from him and you know what? Jesus was feeling that. Imagine how hard it would be for you. Who, who here has a daddy that loves them? Raise your hand if you have a daddy that loves you. Yeah. Imagine how hard it would be for you if, if that daddy, he just pulled away from you. That would be very hard. That's what Jesus was feeling on the cross, except his daddy was God. And so it felt way worse than any of us could feel. And he was crying out and saying, God, why have you forsaken me? But the reason was Jesus was covered over with all of our darkness. And God is light. God will not be next to the darkness of sin. He will never be close to it. 
he will always be far away from it. And so when Jesus covered over himself with the darkness of sin, God turned away from him. He treated him as if that darkness came out of him. My God, Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? And if there was an answer, it would say, because you're covered with the darkness of all of those moments of disobedience. And I will not look at that. But on the third day, Jesus, after he had taken all of that darkness and taken it all the way down into the grave and placed it there forever, he rose from the grave. He wasn't dark any longer. He came out of the grave into the light of life, and now you know what he does? He offers his light, the light of his salvation, to anyone who will believe in him. Every person of every age, whether you're five years old or 55 years old, he offers the light of salvation to those who are willing to confess their sins and believe that he died for those sins on the cross, that he took the darkness of our hearts on the cross. He is willing then to give you the light of hope forever. This is exactly what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness has done a new miracle. He has shown where? In our hearts. He's shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, in the middle of that cave, remember that cave where nobody had a flashlight? Everybody said, no, I don't have a flashlight. Nobody has a flashlight. All of a sudden, a light starts shining. A light shines. And that light passes through our brain and into our heart and it illuminates our dark heart with the hope of eternal life because of Jesus. Because Jesus took the darkness of his people into the grave and paid for it forever, now there is light where before there was only darkness. And now for everyone who believes in him, it's as though God said in our hearts, let there be light. And there was light. And the good news of that promise is that that light is spread from one person to another person through the message of Jesus. When we tell people about Jesus, we are inviting them to see the light that they need. We're offering them. We're we're basically saying, I have a light. It's called the message of Jesus. Because we still live in this dark cave of this world where a lot of people still live in darkness and they need someone to tell them about Jesus so that they can also have the light of life. Actually, Jesus said it this way. He said that we also are the light in this world and that we're not to be hidden. We're to allow that light to shine before other people, the message of Jesus, so that they can come to the light and be saved. And one day, one day, when this gospel story, this true story about the light of the world, when it's been told millions and millions of times to millions and millions of people, and some of you who are here and you don't normally sit in here, you're normally in class, you're going to be telling this story to some people long after the rest of us are gone. One day, one day, When it's been told to millions of people, then our light, Jesus, will come back to this world. He will enter this world and take all those who believed in him back with him to the very presence of God, where God is once again right next to them again. John the Apostle writes about that uh, in his final book, the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. And he still uses the same example of light and darkness. Listen to what John says. He says, in that place where Jesus will take us, all those who believed in him, all those who have trusted in him, who have placed on his cross all of our darkness and received instead his light of salvation, when he takes all of those people with him, here's what it's going to be like. No longer will there be anything cursed. That means God will never turn away from any person there again forever. But the throne of God 
and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. Night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The reason night will be no more is because Jesus, God the Son, took on the form of a little baby boy, grew to a man, took on our darkness, died, and then rose again so that in believing in him, we could go to that place where we can be right next to God again. And we can have light in him forever. He is the light of the world. If you're here, and whether you're a a child or a lot bigger child, if you believe in Jesus, that he is your savior and king, you will be with him in that place where there is no night and you can be right next to God forever. And if you're here and you've already believed in Jesus, this is the joy of Christmas. This is the gift we wake up to celebrating tomorrow morning. There is a light called Jesus Christ, light of light, God of God, incarnate, sent of the Father. And he comes to us and offers us permanent, irrevocable salvation, the gift and the joy of life in his presence. Where we once were lost, now we have been found. Where we once were darkness, now we are light in the Lord. This is the light we are celebrating tomorrow morning. Let's thank him. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. And Lord, you are the light of our hearts. As we rejoice in your gift of salvation. We rejoice that you have come to us in grace and mercy and, Lord, measureless kindness to rescue us. And Lord, I pray for every person here that every person here would believe in you. Lord, I pray for those who don't normally sit through a sermon like this, Lord, the young people. Lord, I pray that every one of them, whether they're three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Lord, that you would cause them right now to believe in you, to take the darkness of their sin and to be their savior. Lord, I pray for those that have attended and, and Lord, they need a fresh reminder of the joy that comes to those who believe in you. Lord, give them the joy of their salvation. Restore to them the joy of knowing you, the light of the world. Lord, tomorrow morning when we wake up, Lord, help our first thought and our thoughts throughout the day to be filled with gratefulness. That light of the world, you step down into darkness. You opened our eyes. You let us see your beauty. You made these hearts adore you. You opened our eyes so that we could declare we love you. Receive our gratefulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the pastors of this church, to our members, we love you. We are grateful for you. And to our guests, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Any of our public gatherings, we're grateful that you could come and join us. We pray you have a a joyful and God-blessed Christmas morning tomorrow. We'll see you next Sunday. God be with you.